Hey guys, you guys are listening to the Live Pixel Podcast. We haven't done this in a while. Uh, so mind us if we're a little bit rusty. Just this a little is, bit. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, this is Sleeper. I'm one of the primary streamers. We also have Ghost or Jordan, depending on what he wants to be called. Hi, do, friends. And hopefully he doesn't yell in his mic the whole podcast, but uh, no holds barred, right? <laughs> <laughs> we also have Jackulus here. I don't know if he wants to be called Jack, which is... I mean, should we do a spoiler alert here? Hmm, Jack me out sounds good. Huzzah, oh. friends. Oh, God. Keep that out. God damn it, Jack. <laughs> uh, who else we got? <laughs> Jack, do you want to be called Jack or do you want to be called Mike? You can do whatever it feels. Mike would be good. No, his real name's Jack, though. Well, I know, honestly. I'm just going to always call you Jack. I'll if always know you as Jack. If we all J names, then sure. Okay, Mike it is. And last but not least, we have Dimbo. Who the hell is this guy? You want to give yourself a quick introduction, Dimbo? Oil can. What? Sorry. Did you just you, yell you oil said, can? Yeah, you guys said we were rusty. Uh, uh. That, that, uh <laughs> already oh, popping off with the humor. No, hey, what's up, guys? Uh. Dimbo, uh, you may know me from such fantastic shows as, um, oh, and then these podcasts that I used to do, Keyboard Heroes, Bootleg Radio, Bootleg Media, uh, but just happy to be here hanging out with uh, the Live Pick Pixel guys. Hey, thanks for having me on. Oh, you just call Live welcome. Pixel. <laughs> live Pixel guys. <laughs> la, 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 la. Sorry. No, let's, not, <laughs> let's not go through your whole pre-podcast uh... Let's not go through that again. <laughs> All right, so uh, what do you guys want to start with? Uh, Metal Gear Rising. Uh, um, I don't like it at all. I think it looks like crap, and I'm not going to get it. Um, cause, You're going to get it because it looks like crap? Wait, what? No, I'm not, I'm not getting it because right, here's what happened. Like, uh, Hideo Kojima was developing it for a while, and then at a certain point, I don't know what happened, but they pawned it off on some other like Japanese company that makes like ninja fighting games, and they just made it into some ridiculous like, oh, I'm riding and I kill like thirty metal gears in you know like forty five seconds, so that's cool. Instead of it actually being like a good you know well developed story like in all the other metal gear games. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, when you look at it, ask yourself this: Do you like God of War? Uh. Never played God of War. Do you like Metal Gear Solid? I like Metal Gear Solid. Well, get rid of Metal Gear Solid and just pretend that it's like God of War with Raiden. Yeah, but... He's all... Don't... <sighs> wait, wait, what's Metal Gear Solid? Is that a real question? Because I'm going to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, when they first announced Metal Gear Rising way back before we actually knew it was going to be some, you know, just a hack and slash, what the hell is Hideo Kojima doing? I was like, here it comes. It's coming. We're looking at a sequel to Metal Gear Solid 4. Never mind. Yeah, that's why it I, looks. Uh, go ahead. It looks just like, like, if you play God of War, God of War has all the combos and the hit counts and... That is exactly what this looks like to me, except it's Metal Gear era. Yeah, when I looked at it, like I was thinking, um, like when he's running up all the Metal Gears and stuff and just slicing them up, it kind of reminded me of like Shadow of the Colossus or that sort of thing. So now I, I've never seen. I think I saw some play demo, maybe not, but you're kind of describing it as like Dynasty Warriors, like hack and slash, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah sort of. They got this system though, where like. Uh, you like knock people up and the whole thing goes in slow motion and you use the uh, analog sticks to like uh, I don't know, like precision slice people so you can like slice any way you want and basically like you know you do like five slashes in a second and you dice people up into little chunks which is so, really like, the only thing it's got going for it for me <laughs> like exactly like out of war then i guess so yeah, yeah for the most part i mean when i first saw it and i saw the gameplay all i could think was it's god of war but, I mean, will anyone be picking it up? Uh, nope. I'm going to wait for it to come out. I'm going to wait for the awful reviews and then be glad that I didn't buy it. But, uh, I'm definitely waiting for Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Did oh, you guys man. see that, uh, 
trailer they released at um was that really considered a trailer or a short film the you mean the the phantom pain thing uh-huh well, okay that was a trailer but no that was phantom pain i'm talking about uh ground zeros that thing was like oh, fa- 10 phantom minutes pain and ground zeros are the same thing yeah they are the same thing but i was talking about the short film sorry that was my phone i should have that on silent but uh yeah the first one the very first one when they came out with it, I don't know how long ago they came out with it. Yeah, where uh, there's like the, the little kid sitting in the cage, and it's all in yes, Japanese. That one. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I I'm I like them both of the trailers, and I'm waiting for that game to come out, and that will be the reason I buy a PS4. Uh, is for Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes. So you're Actually, assuming it's going to be on the PS4? I assume so, because I mean we're getting what an announcement for the PS4 on uh, February twentieth. Uh huh. So, I, I'm expecting to see the PS4 at E3 this year in June, and then possible release this year. So I don't see why it wouldn't be on the new console. Plus, Hideo Kojima has always worked really closely with Sony. Like, uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 was supposed to be a launch title, but they pushed it back just because uh, Hideo Kojima wanted to put so much polish on it. Oh yeah, I can't wait for February 20th. I'm a PS3 fanboy. I mean, granted, my PS3 is only used for multimedia, being Netflix or Netflix. Yeah, my uh... occasional Blu-ray movie. Mm-hmm. Fifth Element. <laughs> See, I'm I'm in that boat that I got an Xbox because friends had it and was absolutely disgusted with their whole online setup and would rather have went and got a PS3, regardless of what happened with Sony. And I feel it's overall better than xbox live expensive internet so do you see do you see yourself getting a playstation 4 or an xbox given the option to uh i would definitely stay away from xbox and go into playstation yeah i i was actually i think sleeper was too a few months ago considering picking up uh, a 360 just to play trials evolutions but now they got uh the trials evolution gold edition coming to the pc cannot wait for that but, yeah, that um, was um, that was almost an instant sell for that. I mean, when yeah. you see that. But did you know if you look on the tablet, there's a Trials game for your tablet or Android? Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> look that up a little bit later and have yourself some fun. <laughs> well, I won't. I I won't be pick, picking that Metal Gear up because I've never played any of those games. I've played God of War and and li- liked it enough on the PSP, but um. I still have an old school Xbox, so I've been considering buying a 360 just to play the uh, the Lego games, the Lego Harry Potter and the Lego Marvel Heroes that, that's coming out. Did you say that you've never played the Metal Gear Solids? I, I tried to follow that up with a bunch of other stuff so you wouldn't catch that. <laughs> yeah, uh. I'm going to go ahead and have to uh, let you go. Yeah, it was nice having you on, Dimbo. Uh, oh, we'll thanks see a lot, you, uh... guys. Yeah, I mean, really, if you can actually, you can get the emulators for it for the what PS One, PS Two. Yeah, I was streaming that. And a few just kind of just lock your door, and you know, tell the wife you're gonna be gone for a while, kiss the baby, you know, and just kind of lock the door and just take a little vacation for a couple days and experience quite possibly the greatest storylines and games that I've ever experienced. Yeah, the thing, the only thing I don't like about it now is like, okay, it's it's spanned across three. Uh, well, the, the main story, Metal Gear Solid, uh, has spanned across three consoles, uh, starting with the PS1. And now, the really, the only way to get the, the, the whole backstory now is to get that emulator, which technically, legally, you have to have a copy of the game to get the emulator. <clears throat> Let's see, but, I do uh, have copies of the game, so... Yeah, me too. But for new people, you know. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to check it out. Maybe I'll YouTube of it. Sorry. Like, you have... You have the Metal Gear series. It's it's like a PlayStation buyer. Like, do you think that this affects someone buying that specific console? Like, here's an example I can get. Has anyone played Bayonetta? Uh, a little bit, yeah. It's similar to God of War, I can say. Now they announced Bayonetta two, but it's only for the Wii U. Right. Well, I'm, well see, I'm not even sure that Metal Gear Solid is going to be, uh console exclusive i'm pretty sure at this point there there is nothing out about it yet but 
what they come out with Twin Snakes, and they started actually going around and including more of the Metal Gear Solid series over to Nintendo and Xbox. So, I mean, exclusivities, I'm pretty sure not going to be there. Go ahead, Gus. Is is Metal Gear Rising uh, on the 360? Does anyone know? I think I think it is. I think that was one of the big selling points. But, like, to, to Jack's question, like, the reason I bought a PS3 was to play Metal Gear Solid 4. And wow. Yeah. So, yes, one game can definitely be a decision maker for me don't the majority of the games t- that are i mean in, in there 99 percent of the time there's a pc version too like i've never bought a game other than maybe a back in the day and buying, you know zelda for nintendo 64 and that kind of stuff but i've never bought a, a console just because this one game was going to be on it yeah i metal- think metal gear solid's never released for a computer right and answer your question before metal gear solid rising is for the playstation 3 and the xbox Wow. Yeah. Well, I guess since we're sort of... Well, <laughs> this is becoming the Metal Gear podcast. This is my kind of podcast. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about Metal Gear for quite a while, man. Oh, well, since we're sort of in the uh, PlayStation uh, area, do we want to segue over to the PlayStation 4 buzz? Oh, you mean the February 20th announcement? Yeah. Other so- than the fact that we know about the February 20th, 20th announcement. What else do we even know about it? Well, um, well, like I said before, my prediction is that we're going to get a little bit of information on it, and then we're going to see it first at E3. But uh, recently, uh, there was a leaked photo, I guess, of the PS4's controller, which has, let's see, what does it say here? It says, uh, adjusted shoulder buttons, a uh, possible share button, a new D-pad, front-facing speakers on the controller, uh, new analog sticks and a uh, touchpad on the center, uh, similar to the one on the PS Vita. And um, dude, I, I don't know that I want all this extra stuff on my controller. Like, I don't feel I, I that, wa- I'm a very minimalist. What is minimalist. the need to have a, a speaker on your controller? I don't know. So you can hear the game sound, so you get a 3D effect to it, kind of like the D box seatings in movie theaters. I think it's a gimmick. Overall, oh. yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd rather have the sound coming out of my surround sound system than my controller. You know yeah. what? <laughs> it's probably they're trying to copy off the Nintendo system where you do certain stuff and it has a speaker out of the controller and makes certain sounds. I don't know if you're familiar with the Nintendo the old Wii school Wii. rumble pack. No, the Nintendo Wii held like if you play certain games, it makes oh, certain sounds out of it. It's he's talking really about certain stupid. pings, like if you're yeah, playing really uh, Zelda. It's and if really you swing, stupid. it like goes, sing. Yeah, it's kind of uh, just Yeah, because it does have shit. a move sensor on there. Though. I, don't, I don't really get why a move sensor would be on a controller, though. Like, I, you don't really get a lot of mobility or anything with a controller. It's not really shaped well for, like, motion gaming. Yeah, that's one of the things that they're trying to push. I mean, have you ever played one of your cell phone games, your tablet games, using the motion sensor? I can't stand Temple Run, and that's one of the most purchased games on it. I can't stand having to move my phone. So when they start incorporating that into, well, start incorporating it, it's already incorporated into uh, console controllers. But I'm looking at all these use, not useless, okay. Stop me there. Useless? No. In my opinion, yes. I don't need sound. I don't need, you know, why do I have to have a touchpad? I, have I you ever looked at your controller that. and went, gee, eyes off of the big screen down to my little uh, controller here? I mean, that's as bad as the keyboards with the LEDs on them. I never got into the Wii because to me, gaming has always been like relaxing, like sitting down, feet up with a controller in my hand, possibly leaning into it just a little bit to help the car turn. Um, but other than that, I just want to sit there. I don't want to have to you know, balance it a certain way and step on a board and flip my wrist the right way. And I definitely don't want to have a touchpad. I, I have the controller memorized. My thumbs know where to go. My in- index fingers know where to go. I don't need to be using a touch screen that maybe I mash the, you know, the wrong part of the screen and it does the wrong, wrong, wrong thing. So I'm not into that at all, actually. Yeah. I feel like the, the original Wii is the only step that, uh, we should have taken towards like that sort of motion gaming because the Wii was like it's 
it was I wouldn't I don't think I would say it's ahead of its time, but it was everything that a motion console needs to be, essentially. I don't I don't like connect and all that. Like I, just, I don't get it. Why? Well, that's it? all about competition, right? I mean, you can't yeah. have you can't have someone else that has a touch screen on a smartphone and you're, you know, so but, that, that, that's why the BlackBerry went out for a really uh, long time. If it's going to sell, people are going to make it. But I mean, do you, do you think that motion gaming like the Wii competes with like controller gaming? Like in, in Dimbo's opinion, not at all. Not at all for me, but I know there's people like my wife who's never been into gaming who has really gotten into the Wii. She's she likes to play this game uh, where you you're like a rabbit and you shoot plungers, I think, and she like loves that that game. Her and her dad will play it for hours and a, um, hours. But to me, if it doesn't have a regular controller, I'm not interested. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you can you can definitely get a demographic for, like they like Nintendo. Nintendo created one of the most what niche demographics out there. Going, hey, here you got to use this little pointy thing, and you got to use a little. You don't have to use our side controller, but for ninety percent of the games you do. And people looked at that and went, "Wow, this isn't your normal. I just got to use my controller and a couple buttons." It's like, no, come on, get the family and friends around. Let's swing a tennis racket and everything i mean that's why <laughs> that's when uh xbox and playstation went whoa 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 what do we gotta have here oh there's a bigger market here for that yeah with um, a market with tons of accessories and i mean you know my brother-in-law has a a full sports duffel bag that he carries around all of his um we stuff stuff in with all the lightsabers and the the extra nunchuck controllers and the tennis ra rackets and the Wii fitness board and all that stuff because i mean people are buying it it sells it's a family acti activity literally on christmas or thanksgiving my entire family will be sitting around the Wii playing all this stuff and i'm sitting there going i wish we just had a regular controller <laughs> <laughs> grandma's beating me at tennis again <laughs> that's that's yeah. the thing I like about Nintendo. Nintendo's always been that multiplayer genre. Like, I don't know if anyone remembers like the Nintendo 64. Like, I used to love wrestling games and like didn't have internet. Internet was like 56k and like, dude, go to your friend's house, have like these big nerd fest outs, and you know, play some like four on four wrestling. It was awesome. Or Mario Kart. You know, you exactly. get the fan family around uh, a Mario Kart stuff. I do like bowling on the Wii. That's just because in real life, bowling hurts my back so much, so it's a lot better. I, f I feel all cool when I'm bowling and I'm getting strikes. Like, I'm like, yeah. You gotta use one of the girl balls. <laughs> They're less weighted. Not so much stress on your back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hit a wall. Zing. But, yeah. Uh, wow, what the hell was I gonna say? Oh, just, sorry. No, when you were talking about bowling being your favorite, uh, that's a lot of people's favorite. And surprise, surprise, that's one of the most popular games that came with the Wii was the one that actually shipped with the Wii console itself. Has anyone seen anyone rage quit over those games? Oh, yeah. Oh, you think what? Rage quitting over the tennis and the boxing. And <laughs> throwing the controllers and shit. <laughs> Into the fucking TV. I, Sorry. I cannot play golf with my brother. He gets mad and starts hitting the ball the other way. Oh, yeah, great. Everyone experiences the person who has a temper tantrum when they're getting beat. I can't well, that's stand that. The temper tantrums were the whole reason they put the little wrist strap on there, right? So you couldn't throw the controller anymore. Yeah. But everyone thinks so they're all badass. Like, like oh. it. I don't. I don't need wrist straps. I'm a man. There goes your TV. <laughs> <laughs> Playing baseball. Ken Griffey, look out! <laughs> Hello. Hey, it's Sato in the middle of a podcast. Hi, Hi Sato. Sato. Hey. Hi, Sato. Hey, guys. Sato just decided to drop in. So. Yeah. Hello, it's Sato. Recording. Yes, it's recording and it's live. What's up, dude? Okay. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Coming to you live. This is Sato. You've probably never heard this of This is just but, a slight uh... temporary break. Ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause for Sato. Hey, Sato, we're in the middle hey. of talking about people having temper tantrums uh, when you play games with them. You know, everyone's experienced it yeah. where you could be playing uh, Wii Tennis or Madden and somebody just goes, you know what? You're just going to win, so I'm just going to slump off to the side. 
this is what we've reduced ourselves to because I deleted all the show notes. It's like the digital <laughs> form of uh, flipping a Monopoly board. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, you guys, give me like a second. I can get my condenser up. I can, I can go. That's fine. We, we can right. stop it. Sir. We can, st- we can give you a minute. We're just gonna move on to the next conversation. We, we're only about, yeah, we're not that well, far in. But I, I got one more, one more point to make though. How disappointed would you guys be if, with the new consoles, came a new system failing manufacturing error, like the Red Ring of Death? A new Red Ring of Death. Red Ring of Death. Yeah. Yeah. My my PS3. Uh, that I got the original one, the big fat one with the four USB ports that still plays the the PS2 games. Finally crapped out on me uh, a couple months ago. Did a repair for it, but now she's resting in peace because the repair. How much was your repair? Uh, I bought a kit and uh, did it myself for about fifty bucks. Came with okay. like a heat gun, some thermal pads, and some thermal paste. And let me tell you, getting into the PS3 is terrible because they put the motherboard at the bottom, and that's the yellow light of death. Uh, is has to do with the motherboard overheating because the the solder breaks away and then uh, the thermal paste kind of ex- expires, I guess. Well, like See, I said before, I haven't bought a new console in a long time, but um, I think that these new consoles are becoming more and more like a smartphone, right? Like whenever I go buy a new smart, or I go buy my new iPhone, I spend the hundred dollars for the insurance because I know I'm going to drop it. I know there's a possibility it's going to crack screen. I'm going to drop it in the water or saw something. And I really couldn't see myself spending three or $400 for a new PlayStation without the, you know, knowing that there's going to be these red rings of death or, 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 or yellow lights and stuff without buying the insurance too, because I, I couldn't be out, you know, like I couldn't be out my console just because I didn't spend that extra 50 or 60 bucks on the insurance. And you're screwed on a $400 purchase. Exactly. And then but if you have no. a Wii U, you're screwed on a little, little stupid iPad. Wannabe or the thing. iPad that, do, that that doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like uh, I've known a few friends of mine. Uh, one of them specifically who dropped it in in a, in a bathtub, but he was trying to use it in his bathtub. Oh God! Why are people? The candles are on. <laughs> the the lights are down just a little bit. He's got the bubbles flowing, and then the yep. little. He's got Mario Kart for the Wii U, baby. Bubbly bath. Brown chicken, brown cow. Yep. <laughs> totally. He got the wrong. He got the porcelain issue mixed up. He was on the wrong porcelain to, to use the Wii U controller. <laughs> no, but back to what you were saying, Ghost, about how you know what are the chances of having what console failures? You said. Yeah. Speaking like, of stuff failing, <laughs> you've got well, me in we- here. <laughs> with my my 13 360s so like if, if you know if that happens again like oh my god i thought you meant coming in here in the middle of the podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. well hold on we'll get there in a second but uh like you were saying ghost about the failing consoles in my opinion consoles are always going to have a problem being overheating because of the fact that they're so compact now to fit in every entertainment center Nobody wants to get one of the giant bricks. I mean, would you put your full tower on your entertainment center if you weren't you? I mean, granted, I would, but I mean, with the massive amount of airflow that you have, well, you full have tower such a... is my entertainment center. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me, but I mean, we're looking at overheating and issues, and I have I can foresee that being a problem for consoles generations from now. Yeah, I don't know, like I. I... I'm unless Metal Gear, the uh, new one, Ground Zeroes, is a release title. I will probably hold off for a few months just to see, because I don't want to take the risk. What are you guys actually excited about seeing from these new consoles? I mean, my PS3 and PS4 essentially is just going to be basically be doing the same thing, same thing with the Xbox well, as far as we were huh? just talking talking about how terrible the new PlayStation Four controller is. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that that uh, that controller. Oh my god, I, I don't know. I really don't like. I just want them to like nuke the design. I mean, like you, like you guys are probably talking about with the the PS4 controller. I just want them to you know, like do something different with it instead of doing a like giant <laughs> dual shot controller. Well, I want you don't, the, uh, anything, the you don't even have to change the controller. Don't even change it. The controller is perfectly fine for what you're doing in a game. I don't need audio. I don't need a a digital. LED screen that makes my controller instead of costing, you know, on release $40, now it costs on release $80. Just give me a standard controller. 
I would agree with you, except for one point. They need to figure out a way of standardizing that controller for microphone ports. So whether it be like an internal microphone, which is what it's rumored to have, um, or they need to figure out a way of of having it, you know, hopefully that, that jack at the bottom is not a headphone jack and it's actually a microphone jack, just so that you can include, you know, a microphone inside the box. Uh, this is something that, you know, Microsoft always held, you know, above the PS3, in, in my opinion, as far as their online capabilities, was because they included... A standardized microphone that was actually pretty good, you know, in the box so that you could actually hear people in multiplayer. I don't know if you've tried to attempted to play any multiplayer stuff on on uh, you know PS3 as of late, but it's a it's a pain in the ass because everybody's got like some stupid like you know Bluetooth microphone that sounds awful and it's you know it's just absolutely a, a massive uh, terrible experience to, in order to find like any sort of people with any sort of quality microphone. So. Potato's making fun of my microphone now. No, 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 yeah. it's not. Oh, or, or nobody talks online, like like uh, Sonata just said. <laughs> it's, it's one of the two. That microphone for the controller for the Xbox, I you have to get something else. I, I know you're saying it's cool that it came with it, but every time I would play and get excited or something good would happen, I would always like rip it out or pull it out or accidentally knock it out. I, I've never had a good PlayStation 3... PlayStation 2 headset. Uh, maybe the best one would have have to be the SOCOM headset. Which I had that was really awesome at the time. <laughs> yeah. Are you, do you mean the uh, like the old school PS2 one? The old school over your head one, PS2. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you guys it, think um do you guys think consoles will ever go away? No. Uh, not completely like Val- valve has that that steam box thing coming out which is interesting which let's yeah you, i saw that too uh yeah. basically have your whole steam library hooked up to a tv rather than having to like hook up your computer to the tv which i would probably totally get if i actually wanted to play with a controller how does that even work though i mean i've seen it but how does steam how is steam box <sighs> supposed to nobody work? knows yet <laughs> yeah <laughs> And nobody knows if it's a hard drive or if you're like streaming the game. Oh, so there's like or, no one. Probably a little yeah. Wi-Fi box. If you guys right? remember, yeah. If you guys remember on live, like the the rumor is that it's gonna be something like on live, where it's just basically just streams in the in the games. It's either that or it's a it's a hardware box. And I don't know about you guys, but I can't I cannot see like a hardware box competing with the other consoles on the market. Like it doesn't it doesn't make much sense. Like it it's it just ends up making market confusion because the people who are, want to play pc want to be able to upgrade their boxes and you you have to have to assume that any steam box you buy is not going to be able to be up, upgraded at all and it's going to be pretty you know standard form you're not, not really going to have that ability to, to upgrade your pc so for the pc players it's not going to appeal to them and to the console people they're not going to know what it is and not going to even care about it so i I kind of wonder exactly what what uh, Valve is doing with the Valve with the Steam Box, just because it just doesn't seem like it's easy to market to people who they want to market to. Like their their target audience doesn't doesn't look like they're ever going to want to you know even touch the thing. So yeah. what's your what's your opinion on the Ouya? The Ouya probably has uh, about a six month lifespan before the consoles come out and then they destroy it. Because. Oh. <laughs> I mean, and that, I mean, let's let's be serious about this. I mean, like the only reason why the UI even exists or, or will continue to exist in this sort of marketplace is because Don't say it, not, not the, the new consoles aren't out yet. So <laughs> once they come out, like I don't see why in any sort of interim like neat Android console system would would survive past that. Though I could be completely wrong on that. Yeah, what was ghost? I feel like Valve has this sort of bad stigma with sort of, uh, I guess, the masses or the general population. Or, like, I, I talk to, like, friends at school. Like, everyone knows, like, uh, uh, I'm, like, a big gamer or whatever. And uh, whenever, like, I'll have someone come over to my house. They'll be like, oh, wh- where's your game collection at? And, like, really, my, my game collection that they can actually see is, like, 10 or 15 PS3 games sitting in a drawer somewhere that I don't play. But I have this huge library of, like, 150 games on Steam. But nobody knows what Steam is, and I feel like St- Valve and Steam have a, uh, are going to have a really hard time getting their idea out there of this digital down- download, which is already popular and a lot better usually than you know discs and everything, to get their sort of message out there to the general population. I used to be a big box fan. Like I had to have the box, 
but I, ever since I kind of discovered, uh, for lack of, of a better word, the digital download, I'm like, I'm all about it. Like, I'm not a big steamer. Um, like, I, I just don't play a lot of games on Steam. Uh, but I haven't bought a console in years because I'm a PC gamer now. And, and that's just kind of where my money goes is upgrading my computer, buying, you know, the mice and accessory that I need for that. Um, and I just I just can't justify spending the you know three four hundred dollars for a console sixty dollars a game and stuff so i'm into this the digital download and and pc yeah about the new consoles do you guys think it's gonna be uh like there's been speculation that maybe like the new xbox or the new ps3 might not even have like a disc drive like it'll all be digital download from their uh, respective stores do you guys well, think that's, that's a possibility like the psp go has that already right where it's all yeah. di- digital download so it just would kind of make sense to me, you know, because they want to advertise that the PlayStation store more and more and more. So to, to me, that's a perfect way to do it. Well, if they people. do it, if they do it that way, then you can see the valve box. If they actually have that coming to a home entertainment center system center, stupid. If they have that coming to a home entertainment system, then you can see that getting a lot more traction than they would for digital downloads. Because a lot of people like tangible stuff. They like sh- they like stuff they can feel. But if you actually force the market into downloads, Valve can take that market and say that we've been doing this for, what, seven years? Yeah. Uh, uh, we've perfected yeah. it, maybe? And, I, you know, I don't, I don't even know where this even stands with Steam in, in the in the post-next-gen marketplace. I mean, you, you could foresee a future where maybe Steam, like, partners with the console maker, maybe Microsoft's. <laughs> to uh to to basically host a lot of their downloads or 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 you know maybe do some cross platform stuff uh with certain games but it's it's unlikely that they're going to do that now that they're doing the steam box but you know i, I don't I, I just don't i really i really don't know about these new console systems like you know um the digital download stuff is is fun and that's that's fine and dandy and all but the the average consumer at least still currently there there have been studies on it uh, does not download, uh, you know, games o- online. Uh, it's it's around thirty or forty percent uh, is the total uh, download user base for for people who download download games. Then again, there haven't been really any, there there hasn't been a good option for for consoles really, except for a few uh, things here and there. Three DS has been, I think, the the biggest thing that that uh, really led in that 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 department for for consoles. Uh, but as far as like the the consoles themselves. Um, I don't really think that they're ever going to get rid of the retail market stores, at least for for this gener- this new generation coming up. Because again, you're going to still have to deal with people who don't have internet connections, who still are looking to buy games, and you're not going to not going to want to exclude those people out. You're also not going to want to exclude exclude the the stores, the retail uh, marketplaces for those for those items, because they still want to sell your systems. And why should they sell your systems if you're going to exclude them? Uh, you know, GameStop obviously is not not putting any new stores up. Maybe they're not going to expand because of that. Maybe they know something in, in the in the future. But at least for the, I think the this next generation, I don't think they'll get rid of uh, retail or retail copies just because of that that sort of thing alone. Then again, they they're already talking about like activation codes on on the, on the disc that you have to activate that is similar to PC, where you won't what? be able to transfer yes. them and sell them as used games. So that even sounds even think of a, fucking crazy. I didn't even think so about you're the saying... the... Sorry, go ahead. No, it's okay. So you're saying we could see both. We could see the new PlayStation with Steam already installed. Like, like I just I got a new Blu-ray player for Christmas, and it already had like Netflix and YouTube installed on it. So we could could see the new console with Steam already installed on it. But then we could also always see every new or the majority of the new systems, the big systems, the PlayStation's, the um, Xbox, always have a physical disc. Because yeah, maybe not, of, maybe not of, Steam of, of, on yeah. it, but um, but at least uh, you know they would. I have to imagine that they're going to be pushing their 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 online marketplace more, uh, regardless of who covers it. If Steam gets into play, or or if they're you know doing it on PSN or you know the Xbox marketplace, they're probably going to be pushing their download service more to kind of get people on that bandwagon, so that they can lead into the next generation, the next next generation, I should say. <laughs> Uh, with uh, you know the, them going full, fully you know download only with it only being online because that's what they you know want. They want to like sucker you into that that online service so that they can sell sell ads to you and then also keep you on that service so, so that they you know keep your market share. Keep people buying. What, buy com- what buy company the, sells ads yeah. to you on your console? I have no idea. Oh, Xbox. Xbox. 
I thought if you paid, you got rid of those. <laughs> no. <Nope>. No. <laughs> which is which is like easily. Like... Yeah, that's easily like the the worst thing about this generation is is how Xbox is just basically gone, full tilt like advertising mode for their console. It just makes no sense at all why they would do that when you're when when you're purchasing, you're subscribing to a service. It's just like yeah, they're still shelling ads at you. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Ready to move move on to Dead Space? We could move on to Dead Space. I don't know. I got to thinking. I'm like, hmm. I don't want to cut anyone off. Anyone has more uh, things to say? Dead Space. Uh, three. Who, re- who really does anybody actually want to see console games be locked down so that you can't sell them as used games in the future? Aren't they? Are, they, are, they, already they already confirmed that they're locking that. Isn't Microsoft making it so you cannot play? Yeah, used both games? parties. Oh, both, both parties are. Yeah. PS3 That's... and Xbox, apparently. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm so done with consoles except for exclusives. That's the only <laughs> reason I play those. If I can't play them on the computer, I'll play them on a console. Yeah. I, I, don't know. I mean, as PC gamers, we, we, we've already experienced the you can't transfer it, you can't sell it because it's on Steam. You know, we already kind of know that. Uh, PC games, gamers have been accustomed to that for a very long time. So maybe this isn't re- this this conversation really doesn't even apply to us because I guess we we don't really care about it. But you know, not being able to sell your used games for a, for a large portion of people out there seems to be like a pitchfork thing. Like if I watched a couple threads on NeoGAF uh, where people were saying like they'll they'll skip this generation, this next generation of consoles because they don't they don't they want to still be able to sell their used games and they just won't buy it. They'll go to Steam or somewhere else. They'll, go, they'll jump to PC instead. And maybe well, I, again I, the you know, Sony and Microsoft are locking it down so that GameStop can't thrive as much so that they can then push their digital download service. Yeah, to me, it's all, almost like the target for this, you know, next generation should be the digital da- download. I mean, I think that's the way of the future. It's going to be a, instead of, hey, mom and dad, can you take me to the store so I can look at all these games and see which one I want to buy, where I finally saved up my allowance and and I, and I want to buy the new you know, um, first person shooter game, uh, when I can just click download now and mom and dad don't have to take me to the store anymore and, and, and that kind of stuff. So it's like the instant gratification that we've been building towards for generations and generations. It wouldn't surprise me one bit, one day to not see a game, GameStop, at least a physical GameStop man, maybe GameStop says, well, now we got to go to digital download, you know, so we don't have to shut our doors. Yeah, GameStop will eventually become GameFly because yeah, if they start, if they start if they do if the if they do not do retail copies, GameStop will disappear. Well, GameStop's already been been pushing their their uh, download service. They've been selling games like on the digital distribution platform, and but that's for console or that's for well, uh, that's PC. What I was PC, yeah, yep. yeah, I know. Uh, but I'm saying like they they may you know end up switching towards digital distribution maybe you know xbox or ps3 they, they you know i keep calling xbox or ps3 sony or microsoft may may you know allow them to to sell like a certain amount of copies i think then we could see a world where some sort of contract. there are no no yeah. more physical co- copies uh, where it's all digital download and i mean yeah, maybe they just go like bargain basement prices and like you go to GameStop because you want that, that extra like two dollars off. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd get it from the the Xbox store. But I, mean, I don't know. That may even create market confusion inside of their their own properties that would cause issues there. So that probably won't even happen. Yeah, I don't know. It just it's it's weird. Like the PC landscape has like Green Man Gaming for for your cheapest like bottom dollar comp, like PC titles, and then they have like you know GameFly, which nobody uses really anymore unless you like used to use uh, what <laughs> direct to drive. Uh, yeah, I, I have a GameFly drive. account with uh, my company Heroes and Bioshock One, so I have uh, GameFly. Yeah. Impulse. I, I bought Kotor from Direct to Drive or whatever that's called D two D. Yeah. I can see yeah. the whole the whole uh, not selling used game things coming into effect because okay everyone remembers used to be Blockbuster Video or Movie Gallery or Video Express we could go what what right, right, Blockbuster what yeah, is this Blockbuster Video those things don't exist anymore like you can't go they don't have like movie rental stores because that's been 
completely taken away by Redbox and Netflix. Yeah, they, they're on the, the tipping point of, of history. You know, it's obviously not going to work out well for, for game, GameStop over, over the long period of time. Because, it, it, you know, it's, it's a market, it, it's, a, it's a technology that obviously is the best one. It's, it's the better technology that should completely, you know, trash it. But I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing for the consumer because then, then you're, you know, shelving all your, your purchases off to Microsoft store or Sony store where they set the prices and they get to determine what market demand is like so that, you know, they can determine sales of when to, to, to lower it. And since they're the only competitor on the market to sell the games, then at that point, you know, what's to stop them from just keeping the games at like $50, you know, until the end of time, you know, you would hope that they would, you know, curb to consumer demands and sales and how, how this stuff is actually going. But Who's to say that they won't just keep them up longer? I mean, at the at the least, they're going to keep those those uh, those prices at the the highest that they can until it's the last moment that they can possibly lower them. Unlike other retail offices and stores, like you, you get used games there. Even though we all hate GameStop, I mean, you're not talking about the kind of monopoly that that you'd probably be talking about in the next next generation. You know, if everything is digital. If GameStop, Best Buy, Target won't, nothing was there to actually distribute physical copies. I personally, I don't see, I don't see physical copies ever going away just because also there's that whole mindset of, I can feel it. I can touch it. It's mine. But if it's digital, if you have service outages, if little Billy accidentally buys a game because your credit card's still tied on your account, imagine the whole, you know, shitstorm of lawsuits that could be coming as well. It's more of a liability with pure download. Yeah, and we uh, we saw that with um, Sony's online service going down that le- that uh, like two weeks, like oh yeah, yeah and remember. also like Xbox had their their recent thing where I couldn't I could not use my cloud saves for like a week and a half, like it was two it was it was like two weeks where all my cloud saves every every save that I had in the cloud was all you know basically gone because I couldn't couldn't use them. So it's similar sort of down periods on both services, you know, caused. I think major uh, questions to be raised about their their stability and their reliability over the long term, sure. Well, uh, we want to segue to Dead Space 3. Sleeper, uh, did anyone else besides Sleeper actually buy Dead Space 3? Nope. 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 See, Negative. Nope. I mean, <laughs> so many people hate it on Dead Space 3, and I don't know why. Yeah. I know, like Mike B was made some video all pissed off at EA. I, mean, I don't, I don't know what was wrong with it. Microtransactions, uh, microtransactions. Was, yeah. It wasn't but, just microtransactions. Also based off the fact that no, I won't go into that. But yeah, the microtransaction <laughs> thing. I mean, well, what, first what of all, Dead Space. Buying? Well, or, hold on, we'll get to that. First of all, Dead Space Three was awesome. I mean, if you like Dead Space One, Dead Space One was pure horror. You know, you had no idea what was there because it was your first playthrough and you didn't know what to expect and you saw a lot of really jacked up stuff what what was the whole campaign mothers hate this game yeah i think that was the that was the dead space 2 uh, commercials okay that might have been dead space okay so and then you look at dead space 2 dead space 2 started pushing more of the action side but still maintain a lot of the horror then they push Dead Space 3, where they actually introduced co-op, which I think was one of the most fun times playing with another person that I've had. Uh, they lost a lot of the horror element, because if you have somebody who's watching your back, you're not as nervous about what's behind that corner. But overall, I mean, if you like the Dead Space 1, Dead Space 2, and you're not someone who just goes, well, pff, it's not horror, I'm not going to play it. Now, you got to be open. you got to be open about it, and if you like the story... You'll love Dead Space 3. I had a blast playing Dead Space 3. I played uh, hard mode through all of it, except for maybe the last six chapters. And then I decided to hop online and started playing with somebody else, or playing with an actual co-op player, and going through that, which was actually a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I think the biggest issue with, with, with all this stuff was it just came down to the, you know, the microtransaction stuff, which... You know, is is not necessarily the worst thing in the world. I mean, if I mean to to be honest about it, I know they EA, weren't a big like, deal. Everybody wants to hate EA, 
And, and I know that's you know, everyone, like, everyone wants to hate every company that's trying to make money in another way. You don't have to get RMTs. The way yeah. that Dead Space 3 marketed their real money trade, i.e. microtransactions, was you could buy these scavenger bots. What in Dead Space 3 introduced the crafting system so you could create your guns, you needed specific, you know, uh, materials. So you could, you are, they already gave you bots in the game to use. So, I mean, by the end of the game, I had two bots. So randomly, you'd switch up your bot, go place it down, it would run off, and then you'd move on, place down another bot, and then you'd move off, and then it'd be like, oh, your bot came back, you get materials. Well, for the microtransactions, you could actually buy more robots. Yeah, you quicken your pace to, to getting those weapons, which is a thing that people complained about because they didn't, they didn't want you to be able to, you know, circumvent that, that gameplay element that they're putting in. And at least for in the beginning, it seemed, and you can probably attest this to Sleeper, in the beginning, it, it seems like that, that amount that is going to be required to craft these things is kind of insurmountable. Super and at least, excessive that you yeah. need to buy microtransactions in order to get them. Yeah. But like it's actually not. Impression. Yeah, first impression is, oh, this is a fucking, like, it is a, like, you know, Japanese, like, grinding experience where you're going to have to, like, pay <laughs> money to, in order to, to, to get into uh, to this, uh, this, this game, even though you just brought, bought it. So that's first impression. And, and that basically seemed to rule the day for people who weren't really informed about what it was actually doing, what it actually ended up being. Obviously, a lot of this stuff is just, like, you know, form, you know, sort of fodder and just kind of explodes just because people are outraged about anything at, at these days, which is something that I like to actually talk about here in a bit, but... And it ruined... That's the yeah. thing. It ruined Dead Space 3. It ruined it for a lot of people, yeah. which it ruined a quality, you know, 13, 14-hour game if you were actually running through it like I was. I tried playing yeah. Impossible in the beginning. I could not do it. Impossible is so unbelievably difficult that it's, it just couldn't it, do it. It's almost impossible. It's it's like the difficulty name. You could say <laughs> almost impossible. And for yeah. the record, I don't hate EA. Well, yeah, I frown on EA, some of their practices, but uh, he, I hate that, Origins or whatever that failed system was. But <laughs> Origins, you mean Steam too? I mean, yeah, that too. <laughs> you mean that thing but, that's actually succeeded quite well for the company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's always two sides of this coin. Like, you know, we can we can all hate Origin, we can all hate EA. Uh, however, Origin is working out and it's succeeding pretty well uh, by all accounts and by numbers that they put out. Um, you know, you can take those for being fours numbers or not, but they have to, according to the SEC, have to actually be serious and legit about that stuff. Um, and as far as we were seeing, it's actually working out for them. And Dead Space Three is also being is selling like hot case as far as we can see. So. All this that's form. just that's just what's happening right yeah. now. So hold on, before we let me finish up with the Dead Space Three. If you haven't got Dead Space Three and you're still on the fence about it, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun, especially if you have a friend to play with. It's even more fun. So well, I have ignore... a Dead Space Three qu question. Mm. What's I mean? Is that are are people mad because they consider that play to win buying more robots? Because to me, it's not play to play to win if they're giving you one or two robots by completing quest or you know whatever whatever it is but that's why can... i didn't understand why so many people are getting mad you could do right. it you can get the robots you like, just won't get it as fast as people who actually pay money to buy more you know, yeah, what's the difference between time. that and buying an xp boost you know everyone gets I mean, mad nothing. because their opinion matters and they need to be heard so they're going to make sure to be heard so everyone knows and understands their opinion and feels like they need to be that same opinion as that person but that's that's what sucks though is because when somebody who has an opinion that is quite a that has a lot of viewers on it says something about a quality game that's actually a lot of fun then that game actually gets hit with backlash because the player base actually doesn't know what's really going on but to end the Dead Space 3 segment that I'm doing uh pick it up if you like Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 it's a great sequel so on top of the fact that a lot of us are trying to still talking about RMTs, let's get into discussion about real money trade or free to play marketing model is becoming the standard where RMTs, microtransactions, are becoming the basis. 
when you uh, say RMT, you're talking about like real money trade. You trade in your money. You buy their online money. Okay, so like League of Legends with riot points, yep. that sort of thing. Okay, uh, I love it. I think it's great. Uh, I think it gets people to spend a lot more money um, if they really like the game. Like I have friends who have played League of Legends for about two years and they spent five hundred dollars in riot points just to buy skins and stuff. And the skins don't even improve uh, like your character's ability at all ever. Like it's just purely vanity. That's all they want, and that's what they get, and uh, Riot profits. And you the game like doesn't my, suffer. Uh, you like, what What character did I play? The big mutant alien guy that I got the top hat and everything. Oh, Choga. <laughs> and it changed his voice, and I was so happy about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I, oh, and uh, Sato. Actually, no, that's, that's a little off topic, but yeah, I'm... I, I've I've played League of Legends for about two years now, faithfully, um, and I haven't spent a cent on that game, so I actually feel kind of guilty <laughs> to uh, to riot just because I'm taking advantage of their system, and I've I've never paid for that game. I'm max level, and I'm like up there with everyone else, you're, so you're you never held behind. You're not taking advantage because you've gotten other friends to play with you who have bought skins, so their marketing is still working. You see how it's how it's working out for them. Even yeah. though you haven't bought anything, like I've bought skins too. Josh has bought skins. That's two friends of yours that you haven't bought anything that we bought skins. Yeah, J- Josh played like one game. He's like, oh, <laughs> <to buy skins." laughs> so what's well this? I can get works. a top hat. <laughs> uh, I'm a I'm a sucker for uh, microtransactions. That if I can buy a goofy skin, I will buy it. It could be five dollars. It could be twenty dollars. I think. I think I played League of Legends for a week and went, you know what, I'm having fun, let's go and drop 30 bucks into this. Wow. So, and now you can also bring this into Planetside 2, which Sado and Josh also play, which you have to use. Yeah, which I think Sleeper spend the most money on and then and then bailed on the game. <laughs> I didn't, the, no, I didn't bail. That's, that's the thing about when we're, this is also tied into what we're talking about, the free-to-play market. There's no yeah. bailing on a free-to-play game. I don't feel bad if I invest money and time into a game that I can uninstall and then go, hey, you know what I haven't played in a while? Planet Side 2. I mean, I didn't uninstall it. Don't don't, don't go there. I didn't uninstall it. <laughs> but Sato and I have spent money on Planet Side 2. So and have I. And I actually spent a lot of money on it. Yeah, more than me, and it was, it was <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. I mean, the real money market trade stuff is, I think, is fine um, as long as it doesn't impact any any gameplay elements. Obviously, that's that's the thing that people don't want is the pay to win stuff. And I think that the thing that I would disagree on, Riot, <laughs> if, if, yeah, if if they if they went the route of like, oh, you could pay money for runes, like if they decided to go that route, then. I would have a serious problem with that because I don't want tier three runes on people immediately who just hit like level twenty. Like there's, well, actually, that... you, you can you wait. Actually, I'm not sure. No, they're you... level requirements. No, you can't. There's no, three you can't. tiers and they're level right. But Jack, can you can you buy runes with riot points or can you, you only can. buy them with IP? Oh, you can I only buy that. them with IP, IP, but you can buy more rune pages with IP or riot right. Points. So really, there yeah. is no way to get a stat advantage in League of Legends yeah. with money. So yeah, as long as it stays that way, I think I'm fine with it. The 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 thing that I think Planet Side Two does that's even clo- that's closer to the pay to win model is that you're able to actually buy weapons with with money. And if you're talking about nerfs and how stuff actually goes over time, you know certain guns could be flavor of the week. You could buy your way into them for, for that initial week and then take advantage of any sort of you know buff or, or you know advantage that a, that a certain weapon has for that for that week. So that. Like the plant plant sites do stuff while not put like pay to win directly, can be uh, used in a, in a manner that I think could be bad against that game. Though, you know, you, you, there's there's a limited amount of stuff that you can get anyways. Like you're you're gonna exhaust that stuff and you're gonna be to max level anyways in, in a very short period of time if you're playing it on a consistent basis, especially with their their new changes to the game that they that they've done over the last couple of weeks, which have been fantastic. But and I would highly recommend playing some Plant Side too, but but yeah, it's uh it, it's not nearly as bad as as other games when you're talking like JRPGs and another other J J RPG MMOs that are out there. I think those take it. What does JRPG further. stand for? 
uh, Japanese role playing game. That that yeah. market, the RTM, it's, it's a, yeah, originated from like what, Korean based uh, MMR RPGs that they tried to bring westernized. Like, there's there's a yeah. whole bunch of them. I'm not gonna name them, but like, what are you saying about about Plant Side Two? Like, I stopped playing it. You were saying it wasn't really pay to win. I felt like some of the vehicles were pay to win. Like, cause we're we got into it. The game just came out. You know, I was playing it. I have a crappy computer, but. I'm going, you know, air to air combat, and this guy's like fully decked out missiles, and I'm just like basic gun. I feel like the thing with RMT, uh, it, like if a company's gonna make their game real money trade, and you're gonna allow people to buy things like guns, your balancing has to be top notch. Like Planet Side Two ha- handles it fairly well because they patch very frequently, and you know, a gun you buy, uh you know, this week might not be the best gun that's uh, next week. And they do a very good job of balancing it. But if you take a game like uh, the APB Reloaded, uh, once that uh, game got bought out by another company, and it was just completely pay to win, and you could tell who had, you know, the golden guns and everything, you you can't allow your balancing to be off for that and just let people... Because I I quit playing APB just because I didn't want to spend money on it but because I bought the original game from the store, uh, but then they got uh, the game, you know, went out of business, got bought by another company. Then they went that uh, real money trade option, and now everyone just uh, everyone who buys guns is you know un- unkillable essentially. That game yeah. was that game was originally fun when it first came out. I was sad to see it go because I'm like, dude, I like this. It's like you have to level up to get other weapons and do certain missions. And then like it went free to play through that company who you're talking about. It's like a California based company. And it was just like, I'm like, dude, this isn't the same game. You can only get certain weapons temporarily unless you buy, use your hard earned money to get a better weapon, which I don't even know if you keep. I don't know if I necessarily even fault the company for doing that. Cause you know, they're in the position of, they just bought a company, just bought a game and a service and, <laughs> They got to figure out some way very quickly to make money on this product so that they can keep it up. So I, I don't know if I even necessarily fault them for it, but yeah, I can I can understand why that's an issue. And I think the biggest example that I've seen of this personally, that I think is is, is a stark one, um, was a was an RPG that that I bought for for the Xbox called uh, Record of Agoras War, and that one like I had spent like forty bucks on the game. You know, it was, it was uh, you know, it, it was originally a, like a, you know, full, full retail cost game. Like it was, it was, this is months after I bought it and I, and then I, you had like, it was either you gr- grind like 18 hours for every single story point, you know, against mobs, or you sit there and you, and you outright buy packs on, on the Microsoft store that will give you money and will give you items and that will give you items that, that are unattainable through any any drop or form in the game like they're they're literally designed for these packs alone like you cannot get them any other way and then on top of that like the the money that they give you is enough for the entire game you just you, you put like a couple bucks into it and you have like in basically infinite gold um that you're able to use on items that that basically circumvent all that grinding um but it's still like you still have to do it for the for the experience cuz you have to level up your character so you're only like halving it while you're halving the time but that was that was easily the worst example that I had seen of it, and we could we could sort of debate the the Diablo like auction house store, which I think is even worse. And Blizzard has sort of admitted that it didn't really go their their way uh, recently and through a couple of articles. But yeah, I just I don't know. Well, like when it gets into that stuff, I think I have bigger issues with with uh, with how that stuff ends up going. Let me jump jump in here because I haven't got to talk about the, this yet. Um. So for me, the RMTs are, you know, um, I really like like the skins, like with League of uh, Legends, where, you know, hey, you can play play for free, but if you want this guy in a purple suit or you know a green suit or or whatever it is, or to have have a mo- mohawk and stuff, I don't mind dropping money for that. I I'm not a fan of the of the play to win, where like you were saying before, where this is the best gun this week, so I have to buy it j- just so I can compete, and then next week I gotta buy another gun. Um, I like the way uh, Lord of the Rings Online did it, where um, you can buy the the little tokens, or you can even earn them in game. Um, but you know, you don't have to have those to to win the game. And and I like uh, like if the developer is going to spend time making a character in this way, 
but then they're going to also make these alternate costumes for them. I'm willing to pay for those alternate costumes because, and, and the, it's like, it's like if I'm going to play a free to play game, well, I already play all these other, other games where I bought a box copy for 50 bucks and I spend $15 a month playing it. Right. So now I got this free to play play game. Well, I may not spend $50 right off the start and then 15 every month, but I might say, Hey, I'm going to spend five bucks and get the guy with the Mohawk that I want, or the guy with the, the cosmetic gun. So, you know, you want to sell a new gun, that's fine, but make it be cosmetic. Um, and I know that we've all played some games like that, but, and, and I like the XP boost stuff. Like I'm willing to pay real money for that because I know that I can level at my own pace and, or I can buy these XP boost and, you know, le level up even faster to catch up with my friends or, just to you know, get max level that that much, that much faster to be the end game. Yeah, Graves in the chat makes a good point that um, <coughs> League of Legends or Riot uh, made a very good decision making runes the only stat boosting thing uh, in the game, but you can only get it with their in game tokens that you can't buy with real money. So I think that was definitely a very good decision uh, to keep League of Legends balance. And I think that's part of the reason why it's the most played game in the world right now. Yeah, I like the, then, I like some of the games that do have that where you can buy stuff, but in game items will always be best. If you can get the items that are in game, it will be better than what you can buy. Yeah. Um. So, any other thoughts on RMT for anyone? Uh, basically, has anyone else noticed that Sony gets a whole lot less flack for pushing? Uh, RMTs than any other company out there. You mean Sony, like as in like SOE or Sony? As like in a... Sony Online Entertainment. Being EverQuest, yes. EverQuest 2, Planet Side 2, they're all running off of the market of free to play now and then allowing you to buy, uh, you know, cosmetic, yes, but then you mm -hmm. can also. EverQuest recently came out with you're able to spend money to buy subscription tokens, which in game you can sell for currency. Yeah, uh, I've noticed I haven't heard that stuff. In, no in, backlash. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd, it's kind of well, weird. And we had all, also put it put it in here if we think it's becoming the standard. And and I really think when you look at um uh games that have gone free to play recently, um and then games that are coming out later this year that are going to be free to play. It, it you know when when developers talk about a free to play play game, you always hear them say. We believe that this is going to become the standard. We believe that that microtransactions, like what we're saying, Lord of the Rings was like the most, or, or not Lord of the Rings, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, League of Legends was like the most played game um, ever, you know? And, and then, you know, you got people that'll spend tons of money on server transfers and, uh, you know, gender transfers and, and, and name changes and stuff. So why wouldn't someone spend a couple bucks for a mohawk or, you know, a different, skin color that that you can't earn in game you know so you can buy the purple mount but you can't buy you know in, in game but you can't get the green mount so someone's favorite color is green and they say yeah i'll pay a dollar for you know a green mount i mean my biggest thing with the rmts is i wish that and i know why they don't but i wish they would do a dollar for do a dollar where every point is worth a dollar or a hundred increment but i understand they do do that on purpose just because um they don't want you to think of it like real money. Yeah, they they want to like dissociate uh, the. Yeah, they want to trick you, right? Right. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, I really like what SOE does with their station system, where all of those MMOs, DC Universe, EverQuest, uh, Planet Side Two, are all under the same uh, banner, that station cash thing. So if you buy station cash, you can use it for any one of their games. That's cool. I like that fact that you know the upper, like yeah, the upper level. I call the upper level company is actually branching it down saying hey guys look we have all of these games 90 percent of them are free to play tell you what if you buy cash you can use them for all of our games yeah and that's that's fine and dandy um it's just i don't know man like that I, I know people get into to, to arguments about like whether whether this is like pay to win all this other stuff and you could certainly make a case that those weapons might be um especially because you're not unable to attain them at least initially um, and then make a, a gameplay impact because you're you're actively using them. Um, but see, if but, you're referring to Planet Side Two, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm referring to Planet I, Side Two. I can't. That's that's where I run into a problem when it comes to 
you can actually get the get, get the guns in game. I can just get the guns in game faster, except I'm actually yeah. paying for them. Yeah, it cuts down the speed. And you know, like we were talking about before with, with uh, Dead Space, and then this, it's kind of the same thing, except for for one thing is that it's a it's it's a multiplayer game. It's a competitive yeah. online multiplayer game versus the other, which is. You know, at at at, uh, at worst is a uh, you know affecting your co-op partner. Uh, this is affecting the world, unfortunately. So it, I think they have b- bigger things that that uh, make it at least a little bit worse in that department. Well, yeah, but look yeah. at the hypocrisy that the hypocrisy of the people that argued and bitched and moaned about Dead Space Three and didn't buy it, and then Planet Side Two. You don't hear anything no. about that. Dead no, Space I, Three I, does not affect. It. It does not affect anyone but the player I, I, itself. I found, yeah, but I found plenty of people talking about like how Planet Side 2's like, you know, buying gun stuff was was weird and, and uh, possibly, you know, greedy and all this other stuff, uh, you know, from, from other people in the media. And then also on, on top of that, there were, there were a bunch of forum threads on, on NeoGAF and other places. So you can but always find I'm, people that, that uh, don't like a certain thing. Um, I'm more of an asshole at the fact that if I want to be stupid and spend my own money buying, you know, cash to get myself a gun rather than grinding it out, boo fucking who if you can't do it. I'm sorry, but I will. I will give that company money that you are not giving them. Yeah, and that's that's fine. I I just think, um, you know, the funny, the, it's perfectly fine, and I don't really, I don't really mind it personally. I'm just, I'm just sort of. You know, relaying what other people are saying. No, no, no. I wasn't, but, I wasn't yelling at you. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but, but I think the the thing that I would say that I would admit is that um, the only reason why free to play even exists is because people are stupid. <laughs> and let me, let me qualify that. <laughs> let, let me qualify stupid. that. Um, the only reason why it exists is because you know people don't want to pay that subscription fee. They don't want that fifteen dollars a month hitting their account, and instead want to like a la carte it. Uh, so, like what we've seen recently with other games out there, I don't, I'm not going to name names, but there, there are other games out there where prices are exorbitant for these stupid little things, and yes, they're, they're not really, they're not really impacting things, but they won't pay. You'll find that in, in, in large part that they won't pay the fee, but they'll spend more than fifteen dollars a month in stupid shit. It makes no sense as to why they're purchasing it. Um, but before, before people get mad about the people that spend money to buy guns and everything. You're all. I'm also the person who would buy Underglow for their uh, transport yeah. vehicle yeah. in the middle of the night. I would have it on, so I'm just a clear target for and for just air units, just bombers coming by, because I got the Cholo glow underneath it. Nice if bright only had a orange rainbow light. Oh, uh, don't forget the uh, what was it? The giraffe camouflage. Oh, giraffe camouflage. <laughs> yep, that oh. in a the the forest ornament. area. The hood ornaments. <laughs> yeah, the that's mermaid over, yeah, which I bought. <laughs> to me, to me, to kind of kind of put a bow on this is, and I know we're going to talk a, a little bit about Marvel Heroes here in a few minutes, but like to me, it's like it's a free to play game, and I've already spent uh, sixty bucks. I bought one of the Founders Pack. I spent say, sixty bucks, so that's going to give me. I'm going to end up getting five characters, a bunch of costumes, and XP boot boost and stuff. And to me, it's like okay, this game launched, and it was like any any, any other game where I'm going to pay fifty or sixty bucks. And so I'm totally cool just dropping that now. And then I really don't see myself spending like a sub fee on that game where I'm buying $15 more every month of more heroes and more costumes and more XP P boost. I find, I find myself saying, yeah, I'm good. I got a baseline. And then maybe months from now, if I run low on XP boost and I, and I really feel like they're, they're worth it, maybe a couple dollars here, or $5 here, but I don't think you'll ever see like a smart per. I don't. I'm saying I'm smarter than everyone else, but like a more disciplined gamer on a budget, um, who's gonna just drop you know thirty dollars a month buying every new hero that comes out. I think you're gonna see, you know, the smarter game gamers, the more di- disciplined gamers. The free to play market works for them because they can limit their amount that they're paying every month. And that's fine if if they actually stick to that. That's cool. But I I found that more often than not, than not the same people who are, you know, really angry about a subscription game going, um, you know, free to play, are the same people who then spend like you know thirty plus bucks a month versus like their fifteen subscription uh, a month. So it just doesn't. 
it's and it's funny too because I, I don't think any any developer at this point really wants to be in a subscription market. Like they want to be a free to play game. So you're only making the case for them when you're talking about that. They would love to take your money and figure out a way to take it. And I've I've talked to plenty of developers out there that are on other projects beyond like Star Wars: The Old Republic and other games that um, would love to take your money uh, and uh, really want it. I uh, really want your money, um, and they don't so want to. Kind of, kind of, kind of a basic explanation, or may, uh, maybe a short explanation. How do you make more money when you look at okay, if I have you know a million subscribers, they're going to pay me fifteen dollars every month. I can count on that in income, versus having a million people that play play your game and hoping that some of them spend five dollars every now and then on xp p booster new skins i feel like the numbers speak for themselves because here's yeah. the thing, like all, all <laughs> so, I orderings have... online like doubled like tripled, <laughs> four, like quadrupled their 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 monthly income just based on that alone i have a good seven or eight people um who i know like in real life the play league of legends who like have their own team speak and you know that's what they do is they play league of legends I, I try to turn them onto an MMO. Like, I try to get them to play WoW with me or any other subscription MMO. And they're like, uh, uh, I'm like, it's uh, $15 a month. And they're like, ah, oh, I'm not paying $15 a month. But yet, in the past two years, they spent <laughs> over $500 on League of Legends, just League of Legends, which equals out to a lot more than $15 a month. <laughs> it's about it th yep. at least $30 a month on See, League of Legends, but... And That's is that because they're stupid or because they just enjoy the game so much and they don't realize it or they don't care? I I don't know. Like, uh, It's a logic I, I that's it's, actually it's, really it's, hard to explain. It's really irrational because, you know, you pay $15 a month. That feels a lot more like taxing, I guess, on the person. Like it feels like yeah. you're spending more. But if it's just $2 here, $2 here, $2 here, it's a lot, you know, it you feels my, like less. But really, it's more. You should see my statement when... Uh, I got it back when Planet Side 2 first came out. <laughs> five dollars here, five dollars here, five dollars here. And the way that the mark the way that they're doing the marketing for in-game currencies is say five dollars will get you a thousand points. The item costs seven hundred and fifty. Yep. So wow, I got this other two hundred and fifty. If I spend another five dollars, I can get another item. Yeah, and you don't so realize you, how much you're actually spending is it's in their fake currency, like that they value yeah, at different that's rates. That's what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, which is what Microsoft like first did. They were like the first company to really do that, except for you know in the Western market, I should say, because obviously there were a few in the in the Eastern market that did it um, before them. But you know that whole like obfuscating like what the actual cost is of the items, well, I think you know obviously leads to more sales and. That's why I sort of mention like stupid people is because they're not really realizing how much they're spending until they get back their statements. And then they figure out, oh man, I spent like 30 bucks on it when I wanted less than 15. Oh my God, what did I do? <laughs> All right, before I move on to the next subject, before I transfer over with an analogy, I think that's what, or yep. simile, something like that. Does anyone else have anything to say about RMTs? Uh, yes, the the company I was trying to tell you all about is called Game Campus. They're the ones that do like I still play. Well, I haven't played it in like quite a while. I used to uh, are online. They do the transaction pile, and that's how that game's still alive. So basically, here, here's here. This is going to be deep. Oh, okay. the Titanic was slow. This is subscription. It's going. It's going. It sinks. The lifeboats come out. They go to free to play, and now they got a kick ass speedboat. <laughs> yep. yep yep no it's it's more like lifeboats come out and then eventually be you know just over two seconds becomes a yacht is, is better that's and leonardo better caprio much. still freezes in the ocean yep <laughs> uh i know dimbo definitely Moving wants on. to talk about uh speaking of let's go ahead and keep with a little bit other microtransactions uh marvel yep and um so i know a, a couple a couple of you guys priced. $200 <laughs> for the ultimate pack. Yeah. So Marvel Heroes is come out, coming out supposedly spring uh, 2013. So hopefully we'll see that train to come in there, Stephen Reed. Um, and it's basically, uh, I forget the guy's name, but it's the guy that made, uh, the, that, that was behind Diablo 1 and Diablo 2. Um, and they ba he basically went to Gazillion and said, hey, I want to make Marvel 
heroes, but exactly like Diablo two. And, and, um, I haven't played Diablo three, but I'm, I'm hearing from people that played Diablo three, that a lot of the, the UI and the gameplay and stuff is a lot like Diablo three, but basically it's a free to play play game. You get to pick from one of five heroes. You play the entire game for free. Um, they have alternate costumes and stuff. So you can, you know, equip your costume from like how you see, how you see Spider-Man in your head or how you see Wolverine in your head. They have Let's all be honest. Everybody just wants to play Ro- Rocket Raccoon. Come on. Yeah. Rocket <laughs> he has Raccoon. his own, he has his own pack yeah. or starter pack. Uh, but uh, so basically they have a couple um Rocket Raccoon. Uh, they have a couple uh like packs that they're coming out with. They're called founder packs where they have like a premium pack where you buy like one char- character that you want. So you already get your free character that you start out off with. Then you get this char- character costs you about twenty bucks. You get like a costume and and a couple days of early access type of deal. They have a, a premium pack, which is like the sixty dollar pack. We get like four he- heroes, a bunch of co- costumes, three or four days of early access, and they have their ultimate pack, which is two hundred bones, and it gets you every hero that's going to be in the game at launch. Um, and you get your name, the credits. You get like a a lifetime um, or an account wide always um percentage to xp and item finding um and the cool thing is you get like every he- hero I, th- I think where they're going to get you on that is is um as they come out with new he- heroes when the game progresses uh you're gonna have to buy buy those they're not included um i bought one of the 60 dollar packs like i was saying before and i actually bought it in a pretty good deal where they actually gave me 60 dollars of in-game currency too um so it was kind of nice they just did a giveaway or a thing on Valentine's Day where they they gave away two free heroes to everyone who uh, had already bought a pack. They gave away Cyclops and Jean Grey. Um, and then they're actually, if you don't have an account, you should go to Marvel Heroes and, and register to get an account because um, they're giving away free Ultimate Packs every day between like now and February 27th. So um, you get a free 200 bucks, uh, you know, pack for them. So for to for play game, it, it plays a lot like Diablo and stuff and there's plenty of game uh, legal gameplay footage out there on YouTube and stuff. Check it out. I I for one cut my teeth like my first PC game was Diablo 2, so I pretty much cut my teeth there. Um and so going back to back to this having played MMOs for so long is a lot of fun. I I broke out one of my old mice or or ma- a mouse um and I I've, I've been uh playing the beta uh, which I'm allowed to say that I'm I'm involved in testing. Um are, are and, they uh, paying us to say all this? Yeah, I, was just, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say. It's well, the best no. game ever. <laughs> well, when we started this, you guys well, said... Well, fuck, for $200, it better be. <laughs> when you guys, when we started this, you guys said you didn't know anything about it, so I was giving yeah, you yeah, a quick no, run. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> $60 of, of currency, like, how do they value their own currency? Now, holy oh my God, shit. They're giving us such a deal. Oh, but wait, two, that's not two, all. No, 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 no. $200? Yeah, but it's um I did the math. I I was I think they they've announced they're going to have like 25 or 26 heroes at launch. So if you think about it, you're playing you're paying like $2 a hero. Um plus uh you know, you get the permanent uh XP boost and item I find boost. You get your name in the credits, which is kind of neat and you get a bunch of there's like four exclusive co- um uh what are they called? Uh, costumes that like like one of the exclusive con costumes is like the the venom costume so like if you don't buy an ultimate pack you'll never be able to have the spider-man venom costume i think the iron man 3 is going to be exclusive to the ultimate pack so um i don't know i'm I'm just super sto- stoked about it it's one of the games that i'm definitely going to pay and uh, play in in 2013 oh fuck it there's you could be squirrel girl <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah and, and they do have access to all of the marvel ip so they're going to be adding characters more and more and more, and and they're not li- limited. Like you know, there's no you can add all characters, but this. Um, so like I had never heard of Rocket Raccoon uh, before. So when I found out he was he was going to be in the game, I was like, well, that's funny. Let me check him out. You know, so it's just neat because I always thought that I'd play as Wolverine, and now having watched a bunch of game play footage and stuff, I've already identified a bunch of other heroes that I would have never thought that I'd play as. Um, that look like a lot, a lot of fun. You really do feel, are, are they're they're trying to make the game to where everyone feels powerful, even at low levels. So is to... it 
is it like uh, you say there's like all these tons of uh, heroes, but like you say it was somewhere like Diablo. I haven't played Diablo one or two, but I played three, and they've got like five classes. Is it is it just like all the heroes are a whole bunch of different classes, or, or how does? That oh happen? yeah, so like each like there's no cla- classes. Everyone it's like Di- Diablo where you're responsible for your own health pool, um, and then everyone has like there's no. There's there's no Trinity. There's no healers. There's no tanks. There's no D- DPS. Um, it's like you know you can basically solo the whole game. You can walk into a crowd of ten guys and start taking them out and survive. Um, uh, there's you know there's CC, CC slowing people down and stuff. Um, everyone has like whatever their powers are. So Wolverine has a bunch of hack and slash. You know Cyclops has his eye beams. Iron Man has his hand and chest beams and stuff. You know so I mean you know, storm, lightning, all, all that stuff. So, I mean, it's it's basically like a bunch of mages or, or barbarians and stuff kind of without the axes and um, staffs and stuff. It's And, you know, I think, I think they've said that, you know, you're going to be able to, like, fly around and everything. So it has, like, kind of a little bit of travel at, um, aspect to it. So, like, if you're Iron Man, you, you can fly. And, um... So what else, like, Diablo is it, though? I mean, when you said that, I was trying to picture... Iron Man fighting Mephisto. Oh, well, I guess I guess I meant like the combat and the gameplay style where like you're clicking to move around and you have your left and your right spell keys and then they have other key key binds in in the middle, you know, so it's not like how in old school Diablo 2 where you had to have the mouse wheel and and you had to wheel between your spells and all that all that kind of stuff. Um it's not like like that anymore. So I I guess I mean the co- combat and it's still like um you're going into the zone you're you know you go into your little instance and 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 you kill your story you know your story guy you know like your mephisto for that act um and then you move along and stuff so and and they they have like these big player zones where like it's not like diablo where like you create your own world and only eight people can go in there it's like all one big world so you can be walking down the street and be right ne- next to Iron Man as your spy- Spider Man, and you guys can fight together. And the loot is your own loot, so whatever loot is on the ground is yours. So there's no holding Alt and trying to be the first person to click the purple that drops and stuff. It's 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 loot um, phased for you. Right. Yeah. Uh... So they made it a lot more like Diablo three with the loot style wise. I can see why you're. See, and that's that's what I've been told. Uh, based on the videos that I've watched and people that I've talked to and stuff, they're saying, "Oh yeah, Diablo three had that." Oh yeah, Diablo, and I, and I don't know. So, is uh, is Aquaman Marvel? No, he's Anybody DC. Know? He's DC. Damn it! Fine, no stay in the kiddie pool for you, Ghost. I'll just be Batman. Um, he's he's DC too. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> Uh, but um, right. it's it's also free to play microtransactions. You know, you're gonna be able to pay for costumes and XP boost and and that kind of stuff. So I'm stoked about it. I can't say that I'll play it for years to come, but I dropped my sixty bucks and I think I'm gonna play it for a while. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, you buying the sixty dollar one or are you getting the big boy? Yeah, I bought the Uncanny, which is like uh, uh, the '90s X Men pack. It's got Cyclops, Jean Grey, Colossus, and Wolverine. Um, and then I've also already decided that I'm going to buy Deadpool, um, and uh, I don't know what, know what else. But like I said, I got that sixty dollars in game currency, so I'm going to be able to buy it, buy it, buy me, buy a few more extra heroes. So I'm thinking I'm going to pick my free character is going to be Storm, so I don't have like a complete X Men team. You know, I have Storm, Wolverine, Cyclops, <laughs> Green cool. Gray, and Colossus. There you go. Jack can finally fill out uh, his Deadpool fantasies. Yes! The movie that they're never going to make. <laughs> never say never. I mean, after all, they are coming never out with episode never. 7. Oh, gosh. Yep. Are Harrison we gonna go to Ford, that? baby! Dude, okay, so yep. there's... <laughs> rumored, I guess. Uh, somebody confirmed it, but now people are kind of backtracking now, so we're, we're calling it rumored that Harrison Ford is going to return as Mr. Han Solo in the new Star Wars movie, Episode 7. What do you guys think? I just... Uh, anyway. I don't know. If, well, it, you can probably put Han Solo, or uh, you know, at his other name being Harrison Ford, on the same pedestal as you put Bruce Willis, Nick Cage, 
<laughs> Nicholas Patrick <Cage>. Stewart. <laughs> Sam no, Jackson. I... Sam Jackson. Come on. 70 years old or not, he can still act. I mean, um, he can act, but did you see Crystal Skull? seems like Skull? grumpy grandpa now. He's, yeah, he's a grumpy grandpa now. That's Dude, right. I, I don't care. I don't care. He's going to be in a movie that I've been waiting for for years to come out. He's going to be in Ender's Game, and that's fucking awesome. Is he playing a, playing a grumpy man? Because like he was in uh, what was that? Daniel Craig and other uh, Alien? No, not Alien. What was it? Aliens versus Cowboys. And that's the only good yeah. movie he's had recently because he played a grumpy old man because that's what he is now. He's a grumpy old man. He's not a, a suave, you know, bitch slapping guy anymore. <laughs> well, he's a sarcastic asshole, just yeah. like he was before. So now he could be a grumpy, sarcastic asshole. No, I just need to do, uh, you know, a Han Solo in a retirement home. And <laughs> yeah. that, that, that'd be that movie. That's it. He could be training his Flying young kid, Shia LaBeouf. Everyone would love it. <laughs> yeah, oh, the yeah. Only yep. The the only thing that I'm worried worried about with, you know, Harrison Ford is is like I'm not worried about Episode Seven be, because let's be honest, like it's more Star Wars mo- a movie. So as long as you know it's going to be overhyped and everything, but as long as we as a community, as we as fans support it, I'm worried that they'll do Seven. Everyone will be so disappointed and they won't do any more. Um, which I hope that I don't think that'll happen because I think they're going to make their money regardless of people right. like it or not. People are going to go see it. Right. But, yep. um, I think if he wants to do it and his heart is into it, it can only be good for the franchise, you know, f- for moving for- forward. I'm worried that, you know, they're going to change EU too much, but, but it's okay. Like I said, as long as we as fans support it, I think it could be nothing but but good for you know the fact that my children are going to grow up with Star Wars in theater. Theater is is awesome. Just don't let Peter Jackson get his hands on it. And he'll turn one movie into three movies. <laughs> well, what movie? What movie has J.J. Abrams trashed recently? Uh, I don't know. Don't say no. Uh, I can tell you right away. <laughs> Star Trek. Okay. No, not Star, Star Trek. Yep. You like Star Trek? No, I I liked it, but I I begrudgingly hated it because I realized that it's not fucking Star Trek. That it is was not all Star, Star Trek. Trek, dude. It was so cool. That is not. And I Star love Trek. Star Trek I Nemesis. <laughs> I don't care. Like one of the what best they say about that film. Ever. That is not Star Trek. That is Star Wars, but like Star Trekified. It's like a, it's like a glossied up like version of Star Wars just with Star Trek like inserted into it on all the characters. Like it has none of the like philosophy that made Star Trek great. Um, none of that. It's pretty much an entire like action film and makes no sense at all in, in the Star that? Trek universe. <laughs> What's wrong? No. With that? You're tearing it apart. Yeah, they had they had uh, but I enjoyed Harold it. in there. I enjoyed from it. And Kumar. It was great. This, this is why I'm conflicted because I enjoyed Peg it. Was in it too. I enjoyed it, but it's not Star Star Trek. So that's that's all I'd say about that one. But you, you're just upset because you missed the old Captain Kirk fight scene where like he throws slow punches and no, no, I, just, I missed the philosophy, the the actual thinking, the the intellectual bit of Star Trek that was not there and was not present in that in that film. Maybe well, William Shatner. Will. Go ahead. Maybe well, unfortunately, nowadays to keep that ADD crowd, you have to have the bright, shiny lights and the quick dialogue. Which is why look at all them you know, lightsabers. That was just why I think that J.J. Abrams being doing Star Trek, Star Wars instead is is great. That's actually awesome because he fits very well like that type of of uh, of shooting and directing. That that type of movie fits very well in Star Trek, like uh, Star Wars, uh, instead of being it being Star Trek. So. Uh, all power to him, you know. Like I think we Star- sh- think it should have been Michael Bay. Oh jeez, get <laughs> out of Michael here, Michael Bay. I don't know what <laughs> Michael Bay he's in, in, in the Shyamalan? movie or not. I think that you know more Star Wars mo- movies can only be good for us as fans. Like, um, if it was up to me, they they'd be doing the Darth Bane trilo- trilogy. But I'm not. I'm not going to complain. Like, yeah. Like, I'm super stoked, and if he's going to be in it, great. And 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 if if he's not, that's fine too. I like to see them go like so far into the past that it it looks nothing like Star Wars and it's it's completely unmarketable. <laughs> oh, you mean Star film. Wars one, like, two, and three? 
<laughs> no, 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 but I mean, I mean, like going back <laughs> oh, to that's like very you know, marketable. That's the Nagas Down days with like the the start of the the Sith. Like that makes no sense in like a Star Wars world with like the 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 blades being like how they were and like just these weird looking <laughs> dudes and it's like no lightsabers like, at all. <laughs> yeah, yep, exactly. No, really, though, what I'm hoping for is um. Well, one, I don't want Harrison Ford to be the main character because I, I couldn't. Ugh. I, he, if he's going to be in there, he needs to be a supporting character. They need to get some nice young chap in there. Get Shia LaBeouf. Yep, totally Not Shia LaBeouf. Get a. Uh, I don't know. Who's I the. I want to be a Jedi. <laughs> get Joseph Gordon Levitt in there. Yeah, I, Joseph I, Gordon Levitt. Oh, there, you cool. there you go. There Because I have a man crush on him. Me and Bruce, Bruce Willis. Does. Bruce Willis will be into the new Obi Wan Kenobi. Oh, yeah. geez, and no. really what I would like to see is sort of like what they're doing with Star Wars 1313. I don't want the main character to have a freaking lightsaber. I want him to be some badass with a with a, a blaster because it's what the lightsabers are played out. It like, I, I get to be there, these, but if the seven eight nine is about a force user, um I think they're talking talking a lot about the independent films that they're gonna do and the kind of stand standalone films. Like there's speculation and rumors about a Boba Fett film, so their goal is to do um, uh, episode se- seven, and then the following year do a standalone film, like a Boba Fett film. Or there's even uh, talks about a young ha- Han so- Solo, so we're doing a Han Solo that isn't Harrison Ford, um, and then do episode eight after that, and then another independent film like a Boba Fett, and then another, you know, um, episode nine after that. Can the, can, the can, young Han, can the young Han Solo be Shia LaBeouf? <laughs> as long as no, he shoots Justin first. Gordon Levitt. Sorry. Yeah, Justin Gordon Levitt. I would I would love that. I have Everyone's no idea who y'all are talking about. I'm the guy right from uh, Inception. The and third rock, character. third rock from the Sun. Third Rock from the Sun, man. Third, third Rock. He was in Third Rock from the Sun. Rock. Rock. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robin from the Dark Knight Rises. Long no. hair. Yeah. You mean the, the guy that played Cobra Commander? Uh, did you see Dark Knight Rises? I, w- I was obviously kidding. Yeah, yeah, he, that guy played, he played Cobra Commander, too. Okay, 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 but back to what Dimbo was saying. <laughs> was yeah, so bad. The oh. extended, you're not really, I don't know, is that considered extended, or is that correct term, extended universe? Yeah. Yeah, the EU. Yeah, them Expand coming out the with expanded, it's, not yeah. extended, there you go. Same fucking word, though. But doing more expanded universe movies. They could definitely, yeah. they could more than likely branch all that out, but can you imagine the budget that would have to go into those films? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, you know, they got, they got plenty of stuff that they could, they could use in the EU. Like, like we, like Demo mentioned, the Bane series is a good, good series to, to, to pull from. Like, that one's eminently Star Wars. You can tell what it is. I just, however, disagree on that point. I think they should go so far back that they don't even have lightsabers anymore. <laughs> Go back to like a weird cult like oh, worship, worship, and they just have all wooden sticks. <laughs> yeah, all the cult worship, and then you know you User find out that timed out. that Dimbo just timed out, and Dimbo just timed out. It's basically the beginning <laughs> of the following, and yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying, Sato too, and I would like, I would like the fights in those movies not to be so self centered on just like the main characters and stuff, because there's more in that universe than just those certain characters. I'll say I'll say the thing that I don't like about Star Wars is that it it feels like the universe is an island and everybody knows everybody. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like it really needs to expand itself and then go to a new a new uh, set of heroes because if they don't, this I swear to God, if, if they do a new Star Wars film, and we're talking about Han Solo and 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 Luke and Leia again for and Boba Fett's in there again, as much as I love Boba Fett. As much as I love Boba Fett, I don't want to see him in a new, another Star Wars film. Same thing like everything else. You know, because I, I just want to see them do something new and interesting instead of it being like, it feeling like this claustrophobic world that, you know, everybody knows everybody. It's like the freaking, like, uh, what, <laughs> like Cheers episode. Everybody knows your name. <laughs> it's like we're all coming around the bar like, yeah, everybody knows. Yep. And then the one the I'm one tired alien, of this. The one alien's gonna be like the Wonga Wonga, Jebba No Bada. Yep. No, you, you want to see you want to see a, a new bad guy Anakin next to him. We want to see a new bad guy and see. Where I want to see a there. bad guy that's like the elusive man from Mass Effect, just manipulative and not like all powerful, but just very suave. Yeah, and the end of that trilogy won't suck ass. 
Because you got to pick <laughs> three colors and your colors combined to make Captain Planet? Well, I don't think they'll come out with a new edited version of the movie. <laughs> oh, somebody give me a high five. That's great. <laughs> Sleeper's just trolling now. <laughs> User was moved to your channel. Hey, Punch. Dimbo's back. Welcome back, Dimbo. <laughs> yeah, did I die or everyone yeah, died? You died. You died. Everybody, everybody died. It's all, purgatory. it's all Justin's fault. I was trying to type that ever since he got on the podcast, I've been just slightly DCing for about six seconds every five minutes or so. I think it's yep. his fault. It's all my fault. Uh, did you have anything else you want to cover about uh, Star Wars, Dimbo? Um, other than that, it's awesome. No, I'm good. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think that pretty much covers. Thanks. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just just throwing this out there, but <clears throat> is anyone else kind of you know keeping an eye on the Elder Scrolls MMO? Yes. Mm, are, you, are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. Are you antsy? The the problem the problem that I have with with both Marvel Heroes and the Elder Scrolls Online is that I can't be taken like my word can't be taken on any of those projects because I know too many people like personally who are friends of mine on those projects. Uh, same thing goes with the Wild Star. Don't ask me about like what I feel about all those games. Oh, all those games are great. Yeah, they look awesome. They're well, all maybe you do another succeed. channel and we can just talk about this. Yeah, we we can do that. <laughs> no, I'm fine with talking about them. Just I around. I signed up but, for the beta and I. I filled, I followed him on Twitter and filled my app out and all that, all that kind of stuff. But other than that, I've just been kind of busy with other stuff. Yeah, speaking yeah. of that app where they ask you like Excellent. what MMOs you've tested and played, has anyone else played every single MMO ever? Wink, yes, wink. I've, I've even played the free to play <laughs> Korean, Asian ones. No, I've actually played them all, whether you you wink, wink, or not. Mm. I I think I played all of them except for Lineage Two. You played Ion? Yeah. Yeah, I beta tested it. Yep, I played Lineage 2 as well. Yeah, I did. And Ragnarok that. Online as well. I beta tested that. But what's your guys' opinion on the three factions? A la Dark Age of Camelot. I dude, can hope. That's like RFO stats, dude. That's going to be fucking awesome. Like, if, if you ever play three factions, if one's stronger than the other, the two usually form up an alliance and kind of share certain things. But things can go wrong too. It just makes a chaotic atmosphere, and it's awesome. That's what I think about it. But who knows? I'm not like fully, hundred percent sure of the information that's going to go on with how these three factions are going to be involved in this world and where their placement is, and how they're going to be placed into certain zones and certain areas where they meet up. It's it's, it's still like early as, as shit, so no one knows. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know a lot of stuff about this game, like. We don't know about the freaking uh, like crafting system in this game. Like they haven't really talked about that stuff. They haven't talked about what the subscription model is going to be like at all. Pretty much, they've kind of stayed away from that stuff. Um, so you know, it's just I, I kind of wonder in the in this in the span. Like, is do you, do you guys actually even consider this game like a free to play game? Like, do you think this is going to be one? Because I kind of wonder. In, in, I, in this, I don't think there's another place for another subscription based game I, I think they know that yeah, oh, yeah. i'm with ghost it's i mean we might see microtransactions uh i think they'll probably follow the guild wars 2 model of maybe buy the box and then uh you know microtransactions if you want i wouldn't mind that because i think more of this company to do better than what guild wars 2 did because guild wars 2 is like here's five years of our game here it is bah I, I'm very disappointed in that game, but I have high hopes for Elder Scrolls. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, Guild Wars Two did Guild Wars Two did good, but it didn't it didn't have it for me. Like I played it, I had fun playing it, and then I did the PvP end game, which I was really really looking forward to, and it was just hey, corpse runs. If if you're ranged, you win. If you're melee, re-roll. Yeah, exactly. Like I played a guardian and. Uh, arena that was like we don't want guardians to be healers nerf we don't want guardians to be tanks nerf guardians do too much damage nerf and i was like you know what every time i play an mmo where they nerf a class i quit and so i was like i'm done with this game i'm not re-rolling it took a long time to get up to that next level yeah i'm in a place now with mmos where one i can't look forward to them no matter how much they advertise and how cool it sounds uh and two uh i'll end up buying an mmo play it for few weeks 
then I keep going. It's not like it used to be where you bought free, an MMO free and yeah. yeah, yeah. It's not like an MMO used to be where you'd buy it and you would play that MMO for months and months and months. Now I just feel like it feels more like a single player game to me, to be honest. One, yeah. I probably because I don't have enough time to put into like big group content, but. Yeah, that's the thing, too. You have to have, like, I still play WoW because of people involved in my life, like my military life. I have, like, everyone's, well, let's play WoW again. So we got 10 plus people I know in real life that want to play the game, which makes me want to play it. And if, if you still play WoW and don't have friends playing it, then you're just going to be like, why am I playing this? And, like, I'm not having fun. I sit in town and don't do anything. And I do, like, my, my dailies. Why am I doing this? Yeah, so yeah. it seems like a lot of people are on the same page when it comes to current MMOs right now. I yeah. I, admit, I, I had a little segment on here I like to call the State of the MMOR Kit. <laughs> yeah, that makes me feel kind of better because uh, I've actually kind of been thinking that Elder Scrolls and Wildstar were going to be subscription-based just because of kind of how big they look. Um, so, for, so for you guys to say that... that you're really kind of leaning towards the possibility that it's not. That makes me kind of more interested in, in an Elder Scrolls because I really thought, well, hey, I'm already going to be playing Marvel Heroes and Wild at Wildstar, and, and I'm speculating just me that we're going to have to at least pay for a boxed copy of, of Wildstar, if not a subscription, that I really can't see me freeing up the money for Elder Scrolls. But if that was a free-to-play game, I could definitely see me checking it out. So that's so Wildstar is one of the other ones you're looking forward to. Yeah, yeah, I think is, we're going to talk to talk about that too. It's it just looks. I don't know if, if anyone's watched. Just go to YouTube, search Wild Wildstar, and look. They have a, bu a bunch of videos of uh, trailers for the for the games and a lot of gameplay footage, and um, it just looks really, really awesome. It, it looks really great. beautiful. Yeah, like Wildstar looks great. Um, the thing I'm worried about though is that. At least, at least from what I, I'm seeing, uh, as far as like hype level, no one sees, seems to be a, aware of Wildstar. I actually like, thought Wildstar already came out. Is it no, it's NC it's Soft? Still, yeah, it's NC Soft. Um, so I, if you can directly I, competing with you know Guild Wars Two, essentially, I'd have to assume that it'd be free to play um, as well. And you know, as as far as what, I, what we've seen of it, I mean, it looks great. You know, like like Dembo said, it, it actually looks pretty neat. It's got some interesting ideas. Not like a typical MMO. Kind of throws it for a loop on a lot of a lot of aspects. However, you know, I, I'm just not seeing the hype level. I check Alexa, you know, to see what the site is looking at like as far as traffic was concerned. Doesn't really look all that well. Although you can't really depend on Alexa for for real traffic. You can just see trends. And as far as like the major MMOs that are coming out. Like even Marvel Heroes has more of a hype level for for that game than than Wildstar does, at least as it is right now. You know that's not to say that you know future marketing campaigns may, may not you know make it uh, you know more more friendly to the average person. But I just I'm not seeing I'm not seeing like a hype level generally about that game that people are really excited about. I'm not seeing like you guys really talk about it. You know, friends of mine. So I'm not I'm not seeing. A, a lot of people really discuss it or interested in, in playing it. It seems it's just it's it's like an MMO that seems like it might be good for a niche, but doesn't really seem like it's grabbing everybody's attention. Is that the is... one with the the bunny girl in the trailer? Yes. And, <laughs> isn't yes. that isn't yes. that the one that uh, David Bass is now yep. a yes. part yes. of? Yeah. Well, how long how long has the game been being developed? Because remember seeing something on massively. I mean, like you were saying that it kind of like tapered off you don't really hear anything about it but i remember after a while like i said i already thought it came out because before, yeah, they, was getting, they were getting news left and right like every couple of weeks it was wildstar 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 and then all of a sudden dropped off the face of the planet well they yeah. they just announced i think it was either this past wednesday or two weeks ago that it's coming in 2013 um so it, so, so it is supposed to be on pace to be released this year um, I watched the trailer a couple years ago when it came out or, or last year when it came out. And then I really did put it on the back burner because I, I got my heart broken by waiting for a soul tour for so long, so long that I really have just been taking every game that I'm excited about, making sure I follow whatever their community team on Twitter and then go back to whatever it was, it was I was doing. Cause I waited way too long for, uh, some of these other games I'm playing to come out. So. I didn't want to wait, 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 and be so focused on it every day. So what uh, what MMOs is everyone looking forward to? I mean, we have Wildstar, we have Planet, or not Planet Side Two, stupid. <laughs> we have Wildstar, we have 
Elder Scrolls. Is there anything else coming out anyone's looking forward to? Well, uh, I don't even know if it's anything to look forward to yet, but uh, Blizzard's Blackstone, Project Blackstone stuff has started to get teased. Uh, they're doing some like ARG thing where they like have emails and like lore info dumps. So I don't know if that's like the MMO or not. And is that different you know, than the Titan? Uh, I don't know if it is or not. Like that's the biggest question. We we don't really know. Um, you mean Halo? Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. It's a Blizzard project. The the new uh, project from Blizzard. But uh, yeah, they're just teasing it right now. And then I think the biggest one that I'm looking forward to, the biggest MMO is is not going to be either one of those. <laughs> Any any one of the ones that we're currently talking about? It's going to be Daisy um, standalone. Nope, no, it's Destiny uh, for the Xbox and 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 PS3 um, and PC. I think I think it's on PC as well. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, it's the one being developed by uh, Bungie. Bungie, yeah. Is that um, that's a Bungie Activision project, isn't it? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm really not sure. But uh, either way, you know, Bungie, you know, does great games regardless and it's a new universe and it seems to be an MMO FPS, at least that's what they're saying as far as the, the overall concept is concerned. So if, if that's the case, then uh, that kind of appeals to my, my market. Uh, since I like Planet Side 2, I kind of like this and uh, I, I just don't, I don't think I'm going to be the kind of player anymore that's going to, you know, go after the RPG, like traditional RPG aspect anymore because I, I just I don't know if I'm going to be able to be you know able to do like the the massive grind again uh, to to max level and and also and I I don't really care much about uh, Lord of the Rings Online as far as the lore is concerned personally like I, I I don't I don't mind I don't care for for the fantasy aspect stuff like I want a more sci-fi um, experience for for an MMO and none of none of these except for maybe Wildstar really appeals to that and Wildstar I don't think is going to really have the kind of numbers that I that I I would want to see be able be able to play with so uh, I don't know if why I mean Wildstar is going to have PVP and I imagine it'll be good but I don't know if Wildstar is going to have the hardcore PVP that 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 you're into Justin yeah which is why you know defiance yeah it def- it's hard I know I, I'm looking at it we can't talk played. about defiance e- either because it's still in the oh end. yeah that's true huh well from the videos that I saw <laughs> yeah the videos which I saw. <laughs> exactly. Super might have just died or gotten attacked or something. His, his oh. heart's failing from joy Ooh. of laughter. Oh, oh so he's, he's, he's back. He's he's alive. But you okay. cut out your like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like you know, PvP stuff is is a big deal for me, and Destiny seems like it'd, it'd be a perfect fit for something like that, especially because. All right, let's just face it. I'm better at FPS. Uh, gameplay than I am at RPGs. <laughs> and I'll just say that. And Dota's as well. Yes. I'm better better at that than playing an RTS. Because like, I've been going through these like cycles of like, oh, I want to play StarCraft 2 professionally. Yeah, no, 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 it's not going to happen. It's really not going to happen. <laughs> well, we're about to hit, I believe, two hours. We're getting close to it. Uh, anyone want to come up with any final things we want to discuss for a little bit, or uh, well, you guys anyone in the, the chat? The MMOs, right? The MMOs that you're looking to, to play. You guys still haven't really talked about that. Right? I'm not looking forward to any. Well, I'm not really looking forward to any of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, the, define right. looking forward to, or when it comes around, you might check it out. I mean, I'm still currently, uh, for me, I'm still very active uh, playing Star Wars: The Old Republic. I'm looking forward to Marvel Heroes. Um and Wildstar, and then I'm gonna keep tabs on Elder Scrolls Online, and um that's pretty much it for me. And like I said, I converted a long time ago from a console gamer to a PC gamer, so that's where I'm at. We came to the dark side, the better yep. side. Yeah. Well, what's your playing segment? What are you What are you playing, sleeper? What am I playing right now? Well, that also leads into what Daisy. am I looking forward to for an MMO? Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> right now, right now, the current fun that we actually got back into was playing Daisy. We've been streaming a little bit of that. Some of the better stuff I haven't streamed because I just didn't have it open, and we're getting used to playing it again. But yeah, what I'm playing right now, Daisy, for the most part. Yeah, same here. Jack. Jack. Um, I'm actually looking forward to Elder Scrolls. That's probably the only game I'm looking forward to, just because. I really didn't get to play Darkfall because of uh, yeah the sandbox and the internet over there is absolutely terrible. Nice. 
Yeah, what I'm playing, um, I'm in JRPG heaven right now between um, <laughs> Nino Kuni and Fire Emblem. Uh, that Where I'm from, they're just called RPGs. JRPG. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, like I'm, I've been between those two, and I've kind of sunk like a good, I don't know, two hundred plus hours. If you kind of I add don't them know both how up. you did that in that game. Yeah, if you add them both up, I've spent a fair amount of time, unfortunately, in both of those games. But yeah, they're both great games. And Nino Kuni is probably my favorite game of the last year, uh, easily, if not longer than that. Uh, it probably one of my favorite games of this generation on the console. So if you haven't had a chance to pick up Nino Kuni, highly recommend it. And Fire Emblem's awesome as well, but the writing's not nearly as good. You gotta pick also, up Euro Trucker, dude. Yeah. Sato's looking forward to the new uh, Fantasy Star Online. He forgot to put that in there. <laughs> I, I actually did play a fair bit amount of Fantasy Star Online to in like Universe, the, the new one that came out. Um made a, a secondary account and played on the Japanese servers. Couldn't understand anything, but I was able to kill stuff. It was good. <laughs> it's almost like when I was playing that uh Stalker MMO from yeah, Russia. Stalker. <laughs> that was pretty funny too. <laughs> I think we saw that highlighted, so you can probably go back to it. <laughs> it might have it. Ghost. We already said. <laughs> I already said. Same you as you, said. Day Z. Uh, That's pretty much it. Like uh, Elder Ghost. Scrolls, I'll play when it comes out. <laughs> shut, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Ghost. Who? Huh? All right. Well. All right. Thanks for watching, or thanks for watching, yes. Thanks for watching uh, the banner. Uh, thanks for <laughs> listening, more importantly. Uh, yeah, this is Live Pixel, guys. Thanks for listening to the podcast. If you guys like it, we'll make sure that we do some more. We were kind of on a hiatus for a while, but uh, I believe when I speak for all of us, tonight's been a pretty fun night. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, Twitter, uh, at Live Pixel Gaming, if you want... Uh to be updated uh next time we're going to do a podcast we'll probably uh give a little further announcement rather than sort of uh keep it a secret and do it on cue but yeah yeah uh, i mean i had fun other than i had to hang out with sleeper that was... <laughs> yeah <laughs> open my life was was good. Say, usually that's plug. everybody's opinion <laughs> it was all good till sato had to come in so rudely hey guys yeah i apologize about that are, I, I, are we I've recording got the sciatica right now? and it fucking sucks and i can't are we recording right now yes yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well. So personal uh, Twitter accounts. Personal Twitter uh, accounts. Oh. Yep. Ghost. Go. Uh, at Ghost is in fire, and I need to make it shorter. Jack. Go. At Yegerid. How do you spell it? J a g e r a i d. Say it'll go. Uh, Justin Lowe at Zarak on Twitter. Z i r a k. I'm Sleeper. You guys can follow me at that one Sleeper on the Twitter. And Senior Dimbo. And you can follow me, Dimbo56, on Twitter, or Dimbo Trooper. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. I love you. Adios.